Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. Hey, Steve here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be doing is looking at some creative ideas of breaking out of always playing in four or always playing in three or something like that, although three can be really interesting. We're going to look at some patterns of five and seven. We're going to be looking at some solo patterns, but we're also going to be looking at some chordal patterns. Um, and maybe this will help you a little bit with your creativity in your songwriting or just in your soloing in general. Um, so let's go ahead and just start off by looking at some groups of five. We're going to look at three different examples, two different soloing patterned ideas and um, a chordal idea. So the first one we're going to be looking at here, we're going to do is we're going to go up and play 20, 19, and 17 on the first string and then 19 and 17 on the second string. So we have... Now this could be anywhere, okay? The idea is I've got three notes on one string, two notes on the next string, which equals, of course, five notes. So you could create anything you want with this. But the point is, is I'm playing... And what makes it weird is if you're alternate picking like I do, the first time around, you'd play down, up, down, up, down. But because you're ending on a down, the next pattern would start on an up, so the entire thing feels awkward the second time around because your picking is different. So I'm starting with a down, but the second time around, I'm starting with that up. Now, that's how I play these things. I use alternate picking. Now, there is another alternative to this, and that would be doing what's called economy picking. And if you did that, what you would do is you'd play down, up, down, up, down, just like before. But then you would push that pick through and start with another down again, which would make it consistent. So you'd have... You see how I'm pushing that through? I end with a down, and then I start again with a down. That's called economy picking. Now, that feels incredibly uncomfortable to me, but it might feel wonderful to you, and if it does, that's great. For me, I'm, I, I grew up learning how to play alternate picking, so that's the way I approach this. So I'm playing down, up, down, up, down, and then up, down, up, down, up, and then down, because again, there's five notes on each one. Now, it isn't necessarily just how fast you can play it, although you might have that intention, which is great, but the goal is really learning how to feel that the group of five, especially if you're doing what I'm doing with alternate picking, um, and then figuring out in what context could you use this. If you're writing your own songs, of course, you could write a pattern of five, and your band could play in five for you know a certain amount of time or whatever it might be. Or you can play in four, four time, and just do the pattern repetitively until you come out even, or you could do the pattern a few times and go into something else. I mean, there's a million ways to approach this stuff. But it just it's kind of fun for the brain because it's something a little different than always just playing even patterns to everything. Okay, so the next pattern, what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here, and I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna play 0, 12, and then 15, and 14. So I'm playing 0, 12, and then what I'm gonna do is go to 15 here, back to the 12, and then back to the 14. So that's five notes. One, two, three, four, five. So now you can see I'm starting on a low string going to a higher string. Where here I was on a higher string going to a, a lower string. Okay? High string in terms of pitch, right? Going to a lower string. Now I'm on this lower string going to the fifth string. So when I get back, I'm going down, up, down, up, down. Well, I can't economy pick through because I'm not going this direction, so I've got to come back up. So I'm going to go to the zero, sorry about that. And I'm doing that with an upstroke. So it feels, again, a little awkward the second time around because my picking is upside down. Okay, but it makes for a really great little idea. 
Now, the actual notes that I'm playing, you might want something that's a little less dark sounding or whatever. You can change it into any key you want or any scale that you want. Um, but that's the idea and trying to get used to that. <laughs> For me, I can feel what I call inside and outside. When I play the first time, I'm stuck on the inside. I'm in between the fifth and fourth or fifth and sixth strings here. When I play the second time, I'm on the outsides of the strings. So when I'm playing, that's what I can feel in my hands and think about in my head. If I play it slow, I'm on the insides here. So I'm playing inside here. And then the second time around, now I'm on the outsides of the strings there. Okay, so I have... So that's what becomes comfortable for me as I play. Now the third example that I'm going to give you is a chordal example. So this one's going to be a little bit different, okay? Go to a clean sound here. And what I'm going to do is create a, a, a chordal progression uh, kind of using just picking through the chords. We can call it an arpeggio, but basically what I'm doing is playing C-sharp minor, A, and B, but instead of using those chordal shapes, I'm using something, again, a little more unique to what I like. And so I'm going to be playing 4, 6, 8, and then 0, 0. And then I'm going to play 0, 2, 4, 0, 0 for my A. And then the B is going to be two, four, six, like that, okay? And these are often referred to as add nine chords or different things like that. But again, we're not really doing a chordal study right now. We're just looking for some sounds and most importantly, the way we're picking this. So what I'm going to do is take this first one here. And if I think about it, I've got five strings. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to be my pattern. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. So I'm going to keep repeating that. That's my pattern. So I'm just playing a group of five every time. Now for me to make this comfortable for myself, the very last note that I play is actually going to be an upstroke. You don't have to do that, okay? But it just feels more comfortable for me, the very last note I play, to do it as an upstroke or upstrum, because it sends my pick back to the beginning. You see? So what I would do is something like maybe do that four times. And then maybe do the other two two times. And again, it doesn't have to be any particular speed or anything like that. If you need to slow it down, and you want to change the amount that you're doing on each one or something like that, you can come up with some really beautiful ideas by doing something like this. But you'll notice that the picking of this is vastly different than the other ones because I'm not doing a, a shorter pattern that gets repeated in the group of five, okay? I'm actually making my way across the guitar from the ceiling to the floor here. And then I'm starting all over. So the pattern that I'm creating is an alternate picking. It's down all the time. But for me in particular, the last note would be that upstroke.
you know, you just gotta kind of explore it and see what you might like with that. That's half the fun of this, okay? So those would be some ideas that you could do to create something that feels more like a group of five. Now, when I write, when I play, all these different kinds of things, I love odd groupings like that because they just feel a little bit different. They take a little more practice to get used to though, which may or may not interest you, okay? Um, and there is no, you know, written rule for how many times to play a certain one or, you know, when to go to something. You just have to learn to explore this a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're now going to look at a pattern, or we're going to take these three examples, and we're going to look at patterns of seven with all of these, okay? So instead of doing this pattern of five here, I'm going to turn that into a pattern of seven. I'm going to go back to my distortion here. So here what I'm doing is I'm playing the 19, uh, 20, 19, 17 again, but this time what I'm doing is starting with the 19. So I'm going to go 19, 20, 19, 17. So that's four notes. And then I'm going to go to the next string and do 19, 17, which is three notes, which equals seven. So if I do this, Again, you're going to notice I'm doing alternate picking the entire time, where you might want to do, again, that economy picking where you push through, and that would work here. Okay, the second example, we're going to go back down here, but we're just going to elongate this to, to make it into seven notes. So I'm going to start off the same way, but I'm going to add two more notes. So I'm going to go and then add in 15 and 12. Now the difference here is I'm ending on the sixth string and I started on the sixth string. So there's no hope for an economy picking here either. So that's how you could approach something like that and making that into a group of seven. Now you could go between five and seven or do whatever it is that you'd like to do. Okay, so let's look at the next one here. Go back to my clean channel. Okay, now here I had that group of five. Well, now I'm going to make a group of seven and all I'm going to do is continue on with my arpeggiation. I'm, gonna, I'm going toward the floor. Well, I'm just going to come back up toward the ceiling until I get my seven notes. So now what I've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to the second and third strings here. Now again, for me, the comfortable pattern for picking would be an upstroke on that first string. You might be doing something completely different. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's more the pattern that we're playing, the fact that we're going toward the floor and then back toward the ceiling again and counting, feeling that group of seven. just sounds so neat and and uh, with chords like these it just sounds kind of ethereal and I love the fact that that group of seven I like seven because it's a little bit longer it takes a little while to get through it a, a bit more than the five so it's it doesn't feel as rushed to me but that's again a personal preference but these are really great ideas for you to explore and see what kinds of things you can come up that break you out of the normal things you find yourself doing and getting bored with and then see if you can come up with something more interesting and exciting Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. Hey, Steve Stein here. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about now is the importance of exploring your fretboard for the sake of creativity. Like we spend so much time, you know, practicing along with a metronome and a jam track and all these kind of things. And, and again, don't get me wrong, we need to do all of these things. 
But sometimes what we need to do is we just need to kind of sit and listen to the way a scale and the notes that are coming from that scale are sort of interacting with the chord that's being played. So what I like to do is sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll shut off my metronome and all that sort of thing and I'll just play a static chord, just the sound of a chord. Um, for instance, my example in this is going to be a C major chord. So we just take a plain old C major chord. And, uh, and then what I do is I just explore the sounds of various scales over the top of it. Now, right now, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be talking about the C major scale. Okay. Now, if you know the C major scale, again, you might know it in different positions on the fretboard. Uh, but let's just talk about that real quick. So what we're dealing with here are the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Now, I could just take those notes. And just explore how they sound over this static chord. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.